There isn't a bigger racing game right now than Gran Turismo 7, and we mean that both literally and figuratively. There's more to this game than it initially seems, a lot more. And with that in mind, here are our tips and tricks to help you maximize your time with Polyphony Digital's latest and greatest. First, we're going to start with how you obtain vehicles. This sounds obvious, but it's not straightforward in Gran Turismo 7. Being able to access all cars from the start simply isn't possible, but it's also the primary appeal. The quickest way to gain vehicles is by completing cafe menu books. Most races here will net you a new car for free simply by completing races. Don't forget, you don't need to win, just finish in the top three. Each menu is themed, so as you progress through, you may receive three slow compact cars to begin with, but this soon ramps up. If you already own one or two cars from a cafe menu, book, then you'll only need to complete the race for the one missing car to progress to the next list. Next, think of Brand Central as a new car supermarket. For those who don't know, all cars in here are from 2001 or later, so any classic cars are absent. It is, however, where you go to purchase the latest supercars, Vision Gran Turismo concepts and contemporary racing vehicles. We have a full list of what's included on the Traction.gg website, so we'll link to that in the description below. Some swanky automobiles such as the Aston Martin Vulcan or Porsche Carrera GT cannot be purchased from Brand Central without an invite even if you have the cash. Early in the game you'll receive one invite to buy a random exclusive car simply by progressing through the cafe, but the rest of the invites you must earn on a roulette via a 4 star or higher ticket. More on those later. Fair warning, the invites expire after a set date so if you lose the chance to buy if you don't act quickly. Used cars are cheaper than new cars, just as they are in the real world. However, if you pick up a used car, it may need a chassis rigidity refresh and an oil change for maximum performance, both of which are available at GT Auto for a low cost. There are only around 17 cars here at any one time, and the stock list changes each day, so keep checking back for new additions and if you want to collect all cars. If you see a car say it's under limited stock, that means it's about to disappear, so don't hesitate. At Legend Cars, you will find just five rare exclusive cars, all for premium prices. You won't find these cropping up in Brand Central with the plebeian cars, oh no. Once again, the stock here changes every day, so if you're after that elusive McLaren F1 GTR, you best keep checking back and saving up funds in the meantime. Each car you acquire earns you XP through the form of collector points. This is the main XP level in Gran Turismo 7, with the ultimate goal to be to collect all the cars. Rare and more expensive cars deliver more XP. This applies via any form of purchase, so either winning a car or buying one. Rising through the early collection levels unlocks racing suits and helmets. It's also how you unlock new sets of missions, unique challenges located within their own pavilion. Reaching collector level 19 will unlock all six blocks. Each time you earn or buy a new car, a new part of the car collection located within your garage will be unlocked. The greyed out silhouette will turn into a colorful car and selecting one will provide you with detailed information about the vehicle. Simply driving in any game mode for more than 26.219 miles, the length of a marathon each day, will complete a daily workout. For this, you'll receive a roulette ticket. Activate the ticket and you'll receive a prize. It could be in-game currency, it could be a tuning part or even a whole car. These have a star rating with 6 being the max. A 6 star ticket earned us 500,000 credits, where a 2 star provided us with just 5,000 for example. It's potluck which level of ticket you'll receive for a daily workout, but it's always worth booting the game and driving at least something to receive one. A mild spoiler warning here, so skip ahead to this timecode if you're averse to knowing how many cafe menu books there are in the game. Okay, have you gone? Cool. To unlock the credits and therefore the finale trophy, play through the cafe events completing number 39, the World GT Series Championship. Finish in the top 3 overall of this Group 3 car series and the end unlocks. As you start the game, you may notice that you can't see and use all of the tracks immediately. These are unlocked once again by playing the cafe menu books. There are 34 locations in total, with most offering multiple layout options and variations. The last track to unlock will be the Circuit de la Sarthe by completing cafe menu book number 38, the Ferrari-related races. If you've just started playing Gran Turismo 7 and are looking for split-screen races or online competition, then you won't find it. That's because multiplayer has to be unlocked, and it will appear after completing Cafe Menu Book No. 9, the Tokyo Highway Parade Championship. Of course, you need to finish in the top three. Then the multiplayer pavilion on the world map will appear, containing two-player split-screen and online lobbies, and a separate pavilion for sport mode, the competitive online section, will also unlock at this point. You'll come across a circuit experience challenge in the cafe menu books, number 24 specifically, but don't forget to use them independently. If you're struggling with a certain track or in need of more cash, visit the World Circuits area. Select any track location and there'll be a circuit experience option. Here you will drive a set borrowed car around sectors of a track against the clock, beat target times to earn cash and also learn the venue. Once these sectors are complete, you're ready to complete a one-lap attack. Completing it will earn an additional stack of credits. 
Speaking of credits, for any race you do in single player or online multiplayer, if you stay on the track and don't ram into opponents, you'll receive a clean race bonus that adds an extra 50% on top of your winnings. This encourages you to not run into walls, cut corners or use rivals as brakes, as it will affect your wallet. I can't help but giggle about how Gran Turismo 7 is basically just a PP measuring contest. Performance points, or PP, govern entry requirements in Gran Turismo 7, both in single player and online multiplayer. PP takes into account several car parameters to determine its overall lap time potential, and therefore acts as a balancing measure. A 300 PP car will be considerably slower than one with 630 PP, for example. Parameters such as engine power, tyre choice, gear ratios and downforce levels are all factored into this number, so you'll need to visit the tuning shop to either pump up your car's numbers or the car settings screen to tweak settings and reduce the PP level, depending on what the event demands. Being able to reduce your car's PP level isn't a given. A quick visit to the tuning shop will allow you to purchase parts that in turn can be used to tweak certain parameters. Three items that can help down-tune a car to hit a set PP level are a power restrictor, ballast and fully customizable computer. The first two are pretty self-explanatory. One lowers the engine's power output, the other adds weight to the car. But crucially, it unlocks the performance adjustment part of the car's settings sheet so you can move the appropriate levels and hit a PP target. The fully customizable computer by default will extract more power from your engine and unlock the ECU output adjustment section in the settings, a second way of reducing engine output. A further way of reducing PP is by playing with gear ratios, although this is only applicable if you own a racing car or purchase the very expensive fully customizable racing transmission. In GT Auto, you can add natty items such as front splitters and rear wings. Not only do these appendages enhance or reduce the vehicle's styling depending on your preference, they unlock the ability to adjust downforce levels in the car settings sheet. Simply adding a part won't increase your downforce to the maximum levels, so visit the settings to increase their effectiveness. Of course, these also alter the PP level. So, you're wanting to enter a race with a 400pp limit, your favourite full focus is 420pp, so you visit the detailed car settings option and pull up the settings sheet. You start playing with the numbers, but the PP doesn't seem to change. This is because the PP level doesn't change automatically in line with your adjustments. Mildly irritating, but there is a workaround. Simply hit the triangle button after making some changes and the game will remeasure your PP. That still sounds funny. If you didn't get the desired number, play with the settings further and keep pressing triangle to see the updated value. You can also use L1 and R1 to tab through historical changes for comparison. If you've lost track of the performance enhancing parts you've added to your vehicles but you'd like to start again, perhaps to help lower the PP of a vehicle or experiment with different parts, opening a new sheet within the car's settings screen will reset all modifications. You can then go back and forth between sheet pages to compare and contrast which parts or setup options deliver the correct quantities of speed. To open a new sheet, simply scroll to the top of the car settings menu, hit cross on the three dots next to the edit settings sheet and select add sheet. In the real world, most road cars perform admirably on track, but if you really want to push them, upgraded parts are necessary. Apply that same logic in Gran Turismo 7. It's important to look at handling and braking first before adding any further power with ginormous turbochargers or a nitrous kit, unless that is, you enjoy understeering into the nearest wall. Similarly, dedicated race cars already have the requisite suspension and brake modifications installed, so you only need to think about track-specific gear ratios and tyre compounds to be competitive. When you have a highly tuned turbocharged engine, it can create what is known as lag. A turbo can take time to spool up, and in that period, your car may be lacking in performance. A racing workaround was the invention of the anti-lag system, or ALS. It adds additional fuel and sometimes air into the mix, alongside delaying ignition timing to help keep your motor at peak levels. You can add these to certain vehicles within Gran Turismo 7, available as a part within the tuning shop. It's not activated by default. You'll then need to visit your favourite car settings page and enable the ALS. But once working, you'll hear a barrage of pops and bangs, plus even blue flames from your exhaust. Onto some driving specifics, if things are feeling too easy or too difficult, select the GT menu at the top left of the game at any time when not in a race, then to options, followed by race difficulty. You can then choose from three pepper levels. This will affect the difficulty levels when playing through the single player cafe challenges. At present, two peppers, or chilies, is the hard setting, with normal and easy also available. This doesn't actually change any prize money or collector level XP, it simply means the AI will drive quicker or slower. The counter steering assistance driving aid is set to strong by default and it tends to lead to overcompensation when correcting slides. Switch it to weak or off to ensure a bit more control if you're a veteran Gran Turismo player using a controller and not a wheel. Setting controller steering sensitivity to a higher number will speed up the responsiveness of your car's steering rack, making it easier to catch slides when using a controller. The default setting is zero and increasing this to one or two makes maneuvering high downforce mid-engine cars much easier. 
Towards the lower left of the in-race HUD, you will notice a water level indicator. During the majority of your playthrough, this may seem completely superfluous, but this is a trick bit of kit. When you're in a race that starts wet and then dries out, it's imperative you stay on the dry part of the track. This indicator will show if you're driving on damper parts of the track and therefore potentially losing grip in real time. When driving on interchangeable conditions, keep an eye on this too to decide whether to swap from wet or intermediate tyres onto slicks, as it will provide you with an overall indication of dampness. Speaking of moisture, if it starts to rain and you're on slick tyres, racing hard, medium or soft, then you are screwed. Really, it's over. Pit for wets immediately. But if you're driving a road car with either comfort or sport tyres, they have tread and you can manage. Clever, because in the real world, road-based tyres can still disperse water. You'll still need to elongate your braking zones and be lighter than a shuttlecock on the throttle, but you won't necessarily need to buy or pit for rain-specific rubber. Finally, getting gold on all license tests is not easy, but forget going to YouTube or Google for a guide. This is all quite literally in the game already. In the license center, simply load up any of the tests and next to the start option is demonstration. This will show you a gold level performance. You can cycle through different camera angles to see breaking points and lines, pause or rewind in 10 second intervals. Thank you, Kaz. So those are our tips and tricks for Gran Turismo 7. Are you smashing your way through this title or are you still attempting to gold one of those license tests? Do you have any other tips and or tricks for your fellow drivers? Let us know in the comment section below. Don't forget to subscribe to the Traction channel, whatever your racing discipline. Keep it pinned and we'll see you next time.